Hello there. Just at the moment I'm continuing my look at some of the wines from Ridge Vineyards and this is their 2021 Lytton Springs. And Lytton Springs is a Zinfandel dominated blend and that comes from the Dry Creek Valley and that's in Sonoma. So we're sort of north, maybe northeast of Healdsburg. So the wine's produced from organically grown fruit and old vines. I mean some of the plots that went into the makeup of this wine were planted in 1901. One plot particularly is an 80 year old plot of Cunoise interplanted with Sanso and that is a feature of these old vineyards that often they're, they're not single varietal they're interplanted and as a result the wines that are made are field blends or in part field plant blends in any, any case. At the same time the different plots were fermented separately and in fact 34 different plots of wine went into the blend of this wine eventually. Ridge were established Ridge in its current format anyway, were established in 1962, south of the bay on the Santa Cruz Mountains at Montebello. In 1972, however, they came to Lytton Springs looking for old heritage vines, and there Paul Draper found some 80-year-old Zinfandel. At that stage it was 80 years old, and decided that the conditions there in terms of the climate and the soils were, were ideal for Zinfandel. And actually they'd been making wines there since 1972 and, and eventually bought both halves of what is now their Lytton Springs estate in 1991. So why is it ideal for Zinfandel? Well, you, you have a situation where the climate is moderated in the mornings by fog and yet at the same time you have lovely sunny afternoons. The soils here are quite heavy, they're a sort of a clay with gravel helping give a little bit of friability but actually the clays retain water quite well so in a, a relatively dry area during the growing season it's good to have these heavy soils to to keep the moisture there particularly in 2021 which was a bit of a drought vintage and, and also these are soils that are quite low in nutrients they're low in vigor and therefore the vines are restricted and kept in balance by the fact that they can't become too too vigorous so yes, it, varieties here, I mean there's there's the old vines in Fandel, but interplanted with it you, you get Petit Syrah, you get Carignan, you get Mactaro in small quantities, a little bit of Grenache, and as I say, all organically farmed. In fact, when they came to harvest in 2021, they harvested 38 plots, but only 34 eventually made it into the blend. All the fruit for this is hand-picked, all, all the lots, as I say, fermented independently and everything ferments with the indigenous yeasts that have come into the winery on the fruit. Malolactic conversion is entirely done with the indigenous bacteria and this is entirely to try and make sure that they're preserving the complete character of each particular vineyard plot into the wine that it's making. It's quite a feature of Ridge that they use American oak and in, in the case of this wine it was 100% of American oak was used with 17% of that being new 3% of that being first year, 10% being second year, 10% being third year, and the balance, I think it's a further 61% or whatever, is third or fourth year usage. So there is a portion of newer, richer, more sort of vanilla and cedar notes coming from the oak, but overall the older oak will be much less high-toned and, and will be more providing an opportunity for the wine to marry in barrel in the presence of a regulated amount of oxygen as to what can travel through the staves. The blend for this wine is 72% is of Zinfandel with 15% of Petit Syrah, there's 9% of Carignan, then 2% of Alicante Boucher, a single percentage of Sanso and a single percent of Cunoise. As I say, 2021 was quite a dry vintage. There was less than 45 millimetres of rain closer to 40 millimetres of rain actually for the whole year and so actually Zinfandel in particular struggled with the water deficit and that reduced crops fairly significantly. Harvest took place between the 1st of September and the 5th of October. What else should I tell you? Oh, the wine aged in barrel for 16 months. It was then gently filtered with a, a, a pad filtration so quite a light filtration. There wasn't any fining conducted or anything like that. So let's have a look at the wine shall we? Looking at its colour, it has a lovely depth. I mean, that is practically opaque. I can't really see through, certainly I can't see through the core of the wine. At the rim, there is a vivid purple hue. The wine has 14.3% alcohol, so unsurprisingly, it's 
creating some fairly heavy tears on the side of the glass there as I swirl it. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? The aromas are powerful and ripe. There's a real note of boysenberry, perhaps a little bit of high-toned sort of dark floral notes, peony, something like that. There are notes of bramble. There are notes of raspberry. There are notes of red cherry. There's actually there's quite a gamut of aromas from sort of red fruit through to a darker black cherry note. But yes, yeah, some, some lovely raspberry and other sort of red fruit perfume, sort of vivid red cherry and that sort of thing at times. There isn't particularly an obvious oak note on the aroma. So let's have a taste, shall we? rich and there's a supple fruit down in note although as the wine continues there actually is a, a tiny little bit of cedary structure starts coming through there's a bit more sweet spice notes there really is a sort of a, a cinnamon note a cedary note that, that's quite drying and yet behind it there's this lovely juicy fruit I mean the fruit has notes of brambles notes of boysenberry notes of black cherry, all that sort of quite juicy fruit because there's actually quite good acidity. Zinfandel keeps its acidity really well. So there's, there's good acidity paired with this ripe fruit. There's a rich warmth coming from the alcohol on the mid palate. There's this almost sort of spirity note on the mid palate, or the, I think there would be if it wasn't for the lovely weight of fruit. Everything's beautifully integrated together. I mean, the, the oak is sitting inside the fruit so nicely. There is that little bit of drying, spicy grip at the finish. The flavours last really well. And actually, where there's that spicy drying grip, the black fruit that's on the mid palate sort of suddenly crosses over into a more savoury note, and you're getting some notes of black olive and perhaps a touch of leather as well. But again, beyond that, on the finish, the acidity is good enough that you're getting a bit of juicy black cherry fruit coming through again. So, a wine that is really nicely balanced it, it doesn't need any further aging because it's supple enough I mean yes there is that little bit of bite of grip on the back palate but I think if you're drinking this with food you're going to need that to balance some fattiness and that sort of thing in the dishes that you pair it with but yes beautifully harmonious now with lovely acidity lovely intensity so I think very happily you could drink this for another five or six years probably longer probably up to ten years and really just the opulence and the vibrancy of the fruit is really really impressive so a very enjoyable wine thank you very much for watching i hope you found the tasting enjoyable if you have enjoyed it do please press like do consider sharing it with your friends if you think they'd be interested to see it too do also please leave your comments if there's anything you you want to say about the wine about the tasting or about anything else concerned with it we'd love to hear what you have to say it's, it's always fascinating and please consider signing up and following us on on youtube and then that way we'd be able to so you join us again for another tasting in the very near future thank you very much for your time and hopefully see you soon bye for now